Welcome to the Texas Goat Radio Show. I'm your host, Victorious. This is part seven of the 1740 live stream by Owen Do It Thou Welt Benjamin. Just real quick, if you if you think that I'm doing something positive, if you enjoy these videos, just hit the like button if you would. I often have to be remembered to hit the like button on videos that I that I do enjoy. It's just not a natural thing to do. Uh, I would appreciate it. Whenever someone asks me for citations, you have spiritual discernment, gut instinct, anecdotal experience. And as a Venn, uh, Venn diagram, you have divine... All right, so let's look at that. Whenever someone asks me for citations, spiritual discernment, gut instinct, anecdotal experience. And so you get spiritual discernment plus anecdotal experience, divine guidance, spiritual discernment and gut instinct, and you get ancestral blood memory, gut instinct and, and uh, anecdotal experience, common sense, <clears throat> source. I made it up. Guidance, common sense, ancestral blood memory, and then source, I made it up. Who's the source, the creator of all? <laughs> you know, it's hilarious. And uh, I understand why people are repulsed and disgusted by religion. Oh, I was so hoping that he would say by me. <laughs> not me, me, but him, him. Oh, that would have been good. I'm not, because I know a lot of religious people that are awesome. But I, I know the terrible religious people. And as C.S. Lewis said, of all the bad men, religious bad men are the worst bad men. I, I, it's so true. Because they will, in vain, in vanity, harness the existence of God, say only they know, and then they will use it for their own ends. Really, really. T Maybe because I haven't looked for it. But to be honest with you, the people that I... I don't know if I've ever really met anyone that said they they were the ones that only knew, except for Owen. If if you're aware of somebody that is that type of person, I'm honestly thinking, and I can't think of one person that is what he says, what he's talking about right now. He Owen Benjamin is the only person that I know that actually does that. Where he says, I'm the only way. If you want to save children, come to me. If you want to know God, come to Owen Benjamin, the castle of whatever. <clears throat> he, is, he is honestly the only person that I know of. If you know of anybody, especially on YouTube, uh, that is like that, drop their name, their the name of their YouTube channel or whatever. I don't, I'll go to other platforms to look at videos, but. Yeah, Owen Benjamin is the only person that I can think of that fits the bill that he's making right now. Terrible people. And I can't uh, assign a specific uh, intent because you never really know, but they're bad. You know, they're they're doing... His intent is, is money. He will do anything for money. And he has done anything for money. Some real destruction. So people are rebelling against that. And that's obvious. That's just by judging him by his fruits by what he says by what he does they're rebelling against the men in the robes like like what we experience with the jortopians where they're like only, only you there you don't know just so try you and god it's like where's your fucking gratitude man where's your honesty where's your authenticity where's your grace why do you act like that why are you beating people over the head with your notice that's one of the few times that he ever says grace and that's because he wished that they would have had grace on him but every, a lot of people relentlessly just mocked him because he apparently deserved it. He walked into something all <clears throat> high and mighty, so arrogant. And they say pride comes before the fall. And I do believe that was a moment of extreme pride from coming from him. And he fell and it hurt. And he, he wished people would have had grace, but people didn't see fit to give him grace. That's why it's important to have a personal relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ and with the, the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Shit. And then people go, nothing matters, nihilism, squirt, squirt all day, squirt all night, uh, because they're responding to the men. But if you actually start at your own beginning, 
you know, oh, it might be not spiritual nihilism without a church. No, no, no. Start with gratitude. There is no wrong answer in gratitude. If you're grateful, you will never be a tyrant. And then someone can say, well, you're super negative. No, I'm awesome at mockery. I'm grateful. I'm very grateful. <laughs> no, I'm awesome at mockery. No, <laughs> no. Maybe once upon a time, but no. That's not even me being mean. Obviously, it's it's according to. It's subjective, just like comedy. But he is, you can, you can tell how stupid he is whenever he says, I'm objectively hilarious. Yeah, that's just stupid. And this is a direct quote from him. He has said, if you don't think what I just did is funny, that means that you masturbate a thousand times a day. <clears throat> I was even grateful that I got to. Which translates to, if you don't find me funny, then you're a pervert. That's part of his shame ritual of keeping his bears in line. You better laugh or everybody will know that you're pervy. Make fun of Obama again. I even said that. I, uh, I tweeted, uh, it was great mocking Obama again today with, the, with his dead chef. I think people think I've become liberal or something because I mock Trump uh, way more than Biden, but Biden can barely talk. It's not fun. He's literally so broken that there isn't any fun, hard truth or funny reveal. There's no idol to smash or spell to break because it's so obvious that he's crazy and broken. It felt good to be able to make fun of Obama and Big Mike again. <laughs> All right, I'm not gonna. You know, like real, like truly, I'm just really good at mockery, and it helps people. And it's not because I'm angry or I feel something is owed to me. Like I'll show you something. Like let me, um, let me show you guys uh, something that in the past I used to be less grateful. Before I really broke through this realization, um, I'd want credit. I don't need credit. I mean, I like that you guys know that I'm crushing, but it's fine. Like here's, uh, like watch this. This is just on the Joe Rogan experience. Here's another conspiracy theory. The, you've seen all that. You've seen all the grainy footage of nuclear uh, test blasts that, that you've, you've seen sure. the mushroom clouds. And there are always these grainy things, and there's all these like little houses lined up and these little trees yes. and that blows everything down. Yeah. Okay, so here's the question, right? So what happened? Okay, so this is great. Okay, you love this. So what happened to the camera? You son of a <laughs> How, how is that happening yet the camera is like totally stable and fine oh my god and, and by the way the film is fine the, radi the, the, the radiation that didn't cause any damage to the film oh my god and by the way okay we'll do this one we'll do the loop one more time here where's the let's see the car the car's car. behind the house it just showed up oh okay it showed up. so wait a minute first of all where's the car no car from. no car the second is, is it really like a car does that look like a real car that's insane is that a house or is that like you know a, a, you know is that a 12 foot you know, 12 inch uh, you know scale model when people say that it's zoomed in then why I would like to see what the timestamp of that was because I I saw that before I saw what Owen was talking about. Uh, he's such an idiot, man. Isn't there a movie? Somebody told me that the Oppenheimer or whatever that was was the, it's it, it all it's all about the nuclear thing or atomic or whatever. And so he's taking credit for a, for a, <laughs> oh man, sussies. Why would the blast be coming from the same direction as the camera? <laughs> oh, shut up. Uh, I got credit for that, but what? some people are like, I'm not every it's like, it looks like the smoke is too big. Watch, watch when it hits. Okay. So then people go, and this is one that's so obvious was me that uh, I got. This dude is so pathetic, man. This, it, this is one of the reasons why it is important to be grateful for the little things. Because if you're not, you try to make up for it by being an idiot like this. Oh, it, it's I, I'm taking credit because I'm I'm the one that pointed out that no original thought whatsoever and so greedy. This is greed, absolute greed. Perfect example of greed right here. Yep, I'm, I'm taking credit for this. I know that there's a movie that was made, which which means that somebody wrote this movie a couple of years ago, at least, probably. And then there was production time. But then I started talking about this. I don't know how long Owen's been talking about it, but I'm sure, I am sure that he is not the first person. But he's taking credit for it. It's a red flag of somebody you don't want to work with, somebody you don't want to be in a relationship with, somebody that you don't want to look up to. Taking credit for everything. I credit for that. But some people are like, I'm not everything. No, no. no, it just so happens that. That would have been like me doing these videos and 
not not get not talking about Milker Nation, Digital to Jonestown, <clears throat> Detective Bill, <coughs> Reddix Verum until she took until her videos got taken away. The comparison of uh, of Owen to Chris Chan came from Reddix Verum, and whenever I I spoke about it the first time, hopefully the first couple of times, but definitely the first time, I gave credit to her. It's so it's so bizarre for somebody to feel as though that they are entitled for credit for something that they obviously didn't do. Does he actually believe that it originated in him? Surely not. Could he possibly be that delusional? Where is it? Did I uh that I recently did a hyper viral video about the same topic. So let me explain to you how the internet works and why I've been so banned. I wrote, it's weird. So my whole take was exactly. Okay. So the reason why he has been so banned is because there's a, there's a policy called terms of service and you have to obey by those terms of service and somebody that has signed contracts and one Benjamin, he has signed contracts. That's what you have to do in Hollywood in order to be hired. You have to <clears throat> sign a contract saying that you understand what the obligation is that you have to, in order to be paid. So he understands, the, like, that's what, terms of service. In order for you to get this job, in order for you to, to continue to have this job, in order for you to be paid for this job, you have to do certain things. You have to act in a certain way. So he knows about terms of service. So after the whole Hollywood experience, because he was a failed comedian, failed actor, no moral or ethical grounds turned him away. His his lack of talent turned him away. His attitude turned him away. He was willing to do, in my opinion, anything. Anyways, somebody that understands terms of service got on social media, <clears throat> broke terms of service intentionally, and then claimed the uh, most banned comedian in the world. That was the motivation for that. That's why he did that. He thought it would be way bigger. And it wasn't. Exactly that. It wasn't just the nukes are fake. It was that exact video and the, the camera. It's weird that the nuclear blast vaporized brick houses, but not the old timey camera recording it. It's because nukes are fake. Hiroshima and Nagasaki never had any fallout radiation. The whole narrative and all the evidence is absurd. 26.6 million views, July 3rd, 2023. So the first time it was ever on Joe Rogan was less than a month after I went hyperviolent. And for those of you that would say, well, um, um, we have uh, Galen Windsor and all those people. Yeah, that's where I learned it from, Galen Windsor. My tweet got way more views than Galen Windsor has total. That's why the internet is so interesting. It's about reach. So he really is taking credit for it. Now, he, it, that is cool that he gave uh, credit to Galen Windsor, but then he still said, that's where I learned it from, but I reached way more people. <clears throat> oh, there might be some truth. There might be some truth to that. But... I mean, this is one of the re reasons, one of the problems that I've seen in the truth or community or whatever you want to call it. People that do want truth and uh, facts and whatever want people to be held accountable and they see the world for what it is. They get pulled out of the matrix or whatever you want to call it <clears throat> is because everybody wants to start something. Nobody wants to actively participate in something. And so that's one of the things that I tried to be. If I haven't been that, I apologize. But I've tried to be uh, a part of this um, accountability movement towards Owen. I know that it didn't originate with me. And that a whole lot of people were very nice to me <laughs> whenever I was like, hey, guys, what's, what's Owen Benjamin up to, guys? <laughs> you know, like there was, a, there was quite a few people that, that were like, yo, dude. <laughs> You'll, you'll find out. Yeah. So 26 million impressions on my tweet. That's what I did find out. Evidently changed the whole thing. And I think it actually led to a massive uh, shift in how people viewed the movie Oppenheimer. I'm not even kidding. 26 million impressions is hyper fucking uh, viral. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, 6,900 quotes. I mean, people are fighting me on it. Don't get me wrong. But, um, and that's in 24 days. 
and people were fighting me on it, but I was battling them right back. They were like, oh, you fucking idiot. It's a zoomed in camera. I'm like, so they zoomed to the inside of a house. There's one shot where it's inside a house. <laughs> so for those of you that don't know, that's not how cameras work at all. If Vivian Kubrick was on, she would be laughing hysterically. For those of you that don't know, we don't have technology and cameras that can actually zoom through walls. I'm glad he pointed that out. Well, hysterically that that's perceived as real. Like she's a film camera director. A, a film camera is very sensitive. Even in, in the 60s and 70s and 80s. This is the Texas Goat Radio Show. I'm your host, Matorius. As always, till next time.